Owenism is the utopian socialist philosophy of 19th century social reformer Robert Owen and his followers and successors, who are known as Owenites. Owenism aimed for radical reform of society and is considered a forerunner of the cooperative movement. The Owenite movement undertook several experiments in establishment of utopian communities organized according to communitarian and cooperative principles. One of the best known of these efforts, which were largely unsuccessful, was the project at New Harmony, Indiana, which started in 1825 and was abandoned by 1829. Owenism is also closely associated with the development of the British trade union movement, and with the spread of the Mechanics Institute movement. Economic thought Owen's economic thought grew out of widespread poverty in Britain in the aftermath of the Napoleonic Wars. His thought was rooted in 17th-century English, moral economy, ideals of fair exchange, just price, and the right to charity. Utopian socialist economic thought such as Owen's was a reaction to the laissez-faire impetus of Malthusian poor law reform. Clays notes that Owen's plan began as a grandiose but otherwise not exceptionally unusual workhouse scheme to place the unemployed poor in newly built rural communities. Owen's plan was itself derivative of and ultimately popularized by a number of Irish and English trade unionists such as William Thompson and Thomas Hodgson, co-founder of the London Mechanics Institute. When this poverty led to revolt, as it did in Glasgow in April 1820, a committee of gentlemen from the area commissioned the cotton manufacturer and philanthropist, Robert Owen, to produce a report to the County of Lanark in May 1820, which recommended a new form of pauper relief, the cooperative village. Owen's villages thus needed to be compared with the Dickensian. Houses of industry that were created after the passage of the 1834 Poor Law Amendment Act. Owen's report was to spark a widespread socialist movement that established cooperatives, labor exchanges, and experimental communities in the United Kingdom, the United States, and Canada. Owen was to disseminate his ideas in North America beginning in 1824. His ideas were most widely received in New York and Philadelphia, where he was greeted by nascent working men's parties. Owen was no theoretician, and the Owenite movement drew on a broad range of thinkers such as William Thompson, John Gray, Abram Coombe, Robert Dale Owen, George Moody, John Francis Bray, Dr. William King, and Josiah Warren. These men rooted their thought in Ricardian socialism and the labor theory of value. Topic: <laughs> Utopian communities. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> United Kingdom. George Moody, a printer, formed an Owenite community at Spa Fields, in the London borough of Islington between 1821 and 1824. Moody published a weekly journal, The Economist, which ran from 27 January 1821 to 9 March 1822. The printer Henry Hetherington was a member. Moody moved to Auburston after this community failed. Archibald James Hamilton, the radical laird of Diel and Orbiston, owned an estate eight miles outside Glasgow. He was one of the gentlemen who commissioned Robert Owen's report to the county of Lanark. In 1821, he and several other Owenite sympathizers such as Abram Coombe formed the Edinburgh Practical Society that operated a cooperative store, and a school. In addition, Hamilton provided his 290-acre estate, Orbiston, for the first Owenite cooperative community in the United Kingdom, in 1825. The community collapsed in 1827 on the death of its founder. 
Rallahini Community, County Clare, Ireland 1831 to 1833 was organized on the estate of John Van der Lure by Edward T. Craig. Unlike other Owenite communities, workers were paid labor notes which they could spend in the cooperative store. By this time, Owenism had moved on to its labor exchange phase. The experiment ended when Van der Lure lost his estate through gambling. Harmony Hall Community at Queenwood Farm, Hampshire 1839 This is the only other colony than New Harmony in Indiana founded by Robert Owen himself. In 1839 his Association of Classes of All Nations acquired 500 acres at Queenwood Farm. United States of America New Harmony, Indiana 1825 Founded by Robert Owen himself. He purchased the community of New Harmony from the religious communists known as the Rapids. The influential Owenite newspaper, The Free Inquirer, was published here. Yellow Springs, Ohio on a site now occupied by Antioch College, Miami Township, Greene County 1825. Nashoba Commune, Tennessee 1825 was organized by Fanny Wright to educate and emancipate slaves. To ensure emancipation without financial loss to slaveholders, slaves would buy their freedom and then be transported to the independent settlements of Liberia and Haiti. Franklin or Haverstraw Community, Haverstraw, Rockland County, New York 1826. Forestville Commonwealth, Lapham's Mills, Coxsackie, Greene County, New York 1826-1827. Also known as the Coxsackie Community, founded by Dr. Samuel Underhill, under the influence of Dr. Cornelius Blatchley's An Essay on Commonwealths, 1822. Saddled with debt, 27 members decided to join the Kendall community, leaving on 23 October 1827. Kendall Community, Ohio, Massillon, Ohio, 1825-9. Also known as Friendly Association of Mutual Interests at Kendall. Valley Forge Community, Valley Forge, Chester County, PA, 1826. Also known as Friendly Association of Mutual Interests. Blue Spring Community, Van Buren Township, Monroe County, Indiana, 1826. Promisewell Community, Monroe County, PA, 1843. Also known as the Society of One Mentions. Goose Pond Community, Pike County, PA, 1843. An offshoot of Promisewell, built on the site of Four Earest Phalanx. Social Reform Unity. Hunt's Colony, Spring Lake, Muquonago Township, Waukesha County, Wisconsin, 1843. Also known as the Colony of Equality. Founded by several English organizations. Topic: <laughs> Canada. When Orbiston collapsed in 1827 on the death of its founder, most of the residents moved to Upper Canada, where they formed the short-lived Owenite community of Maxwell near Sarnia. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Cooperative movement and labor exchange. Although the early emphasis in Owenism was on the formation of utopian communities, these communities were predicated upon cooperative labor, and frequently, cooperative sales. For example, the Edinburgh Practical Society created by the founders of Orbiston operated a cooperative store to raise the capital for the community. 
Abram Coombe, the leader of that community, was to author the pamphlet The Sphere for Joint Stock Companies 1825, which made clear that Orbiston was not to be a self-subsistent commune, but a cooperative trading endeavor. For the majority of Owenites who did not live in these utopian communities, the working-class Owenite tradition was composed of three overlapping institutions. The cooperative store, the labor exchange and the trade union. The cooperative ideas of Owen and Coombe were further developed by the Brighton doctor, William King, publisher of The Cooperator. Although the paper was only published for two years between 1827-9, it served to unify the movement. The next attempt to broaden the cooperative movement was the British Association for the Promotion of Cooperative Knowledge BAPCK, founded in 1829. It was the successor to the London Cooperative Society, and served as a clearing house of information for Britain's 300 cooperatives. It provided pamphlets, lectures and «missionaries» for the movement. It held its quarterly meetings in the London Mechanics Institute, with frequent lectures from William Lovett, and many other radical Owenites who would go on to lead the London Working Men's Association. BAPCK rejected joint stock cooperative efforts as systems of competition. Its aim was the establishment of an agricultural, manufacturing or trading community. They recognized that the success of cooperation depended upon parliamentary reform, and this proved the basis for working with the radical reformers who would go on to create the Chartist movement. The National Equitable Labour Exchange was founded in London in 1832 and spread to several English cities, most notably Birmingham, before closing in 1834. Beginning from the Ricardian socialist view that labor was the source of all value, the exchange issued labor notes, similar to banknotes, denominated in hours. John Gray proposed a national chamber of commerce as a central bank issuing a labor currency. A similar time-based currency would be created by an American Owenite, Josiah Warren, who founded the Cincinnati Time Store. A short-lived labor exchange was also founded in 1836 in Kingston, Upper Canada. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Political and labor organization. Robert Owen was resolutely apolitical and initially pursued a non-class-based form of community organization. However, as the focus of the movement shifted from the formation of utopian communities to cooperatives, Owenites became active in labor organization in both the United Kingdom and the United States. In the United Kingdom, Owenites became further involved in electoral reform now envisioned as part of a broader reform movement. United Kingdom Between 1829 and 1835, Owenite socialism was politicised through two organisations, the British Association for the Promotion of Cooperative Knowledge, and its successor, the National Union of the Working Classes founded in 1831, and abandoned in 1835. The aim of BAPCK was to promote cooperatives, but its members recognized that political reform was necessary if they were to achieve that end. They thus formed a political union, which was the principal form of political activity in the period before the Great Reform Act of 1832. Political unions organized petitioning campaigns meant to sway Parliament. The BAPCK leadership thus formed the National Union of the Working Classes NUWC to push for a combination of Owenism and radical democratic political reform. Owen himself resisted the NUWC's political efforts at reform, and by 1833, he was an acknowledged leader of the British trade union movement. In February 1834, he helped form Britain's first national labour organisation, the Grand National Consolidated Trades Union. 
The organization began to break up in the summer of 1834 and by November, it had ceased to function. It was from this heady mix of working-class trade unionism, cooperativism, and political radicalism in the disappointed wake of the 1832 Reform Bill and the 1834 New Poor Law, that a number of prominent Owenite leaders such as William Lovett, John Cleave and Henry Hetherington helped form the London Working Men's Association in 1836. The London Working Men's Association led the Chartist movement demanding universal suffrage. Many have viewed Owenite socialism and Chartism as mutually hostile because of Owen's refusal to engage in politics. However, Chartists and Owenites were many parts but one body in this initial stage. Topic. United States of America Robert Dale Owen emigrated to the United States in 1825 to help his father run New Harmony, Indiana. After the community dissolved, Robert Dale Owen moved to New York City and became the co-editor of the Free Enquirer, a socialistic and anti-Christian weekly, with Francis Wright, the founder of the Nashoba community, from 1828 to 1832. They also founded a Hall of Science in New York like those being created by Owenites in the United Kingdom. From this base, Owen and Wright sought to influence the Working Men's Party. The Working Men's Party emerged spontaneously out of strike action by journeymen in 1829 who protested having to work more than 10 hours a day. They appointed a committee of 50 to discuss organization, and they proposed running a ticket of journeymen in the legislative elections. At the same time, Owen and Wright were continuing their own efforts to organize New York City's working classes. The two groups uneasily merged, and were encouraged by their success in the elections. To support the movement, George Henry Evans began publishing The Working Man's Advocate. The new party quickly fell victim to factionalism over several controversial proposals. Owen's controversial contribution was a proposed state guardianship plan, where children would be removed from their homes at the age of two and placed in government-run schools, to protect them from the degeneracy of slum life and allow their optimum development through free schooling. By late 1830, the party was effectively dead. <laughs> Canada Owenism was introduced to Upper Canada in 1835 by the Reverend Thaddeus Osgood, a Montreal-based evangelical minister. Osgood returned to London in 1829. Deep in debt, he was unable to return to Canada, and spent the succeeding five years preaching in London's workhouses and prisons. It was in this working-class milieu that Osgood met and debated with Robert Owen. Although attracted by the «home colony» model of poverty relief, Osgood was offended by Owen's anti-religious rhetoric. Drawing on Owenism, rather than Owen, Osgood proposed to found «relief unions» for the poor when he finally returned to Canada in 1835. Through Osgood's influence, Robert Owen's ideas were widely debated in Toronto. Osgood's proposal elicited support from across Upper Canada in early 1836, and petitions for the Relief Unions Incorporation were sent to the Assembly and Legislative Council. Significantly, Osgood's plan was proposed at the same time as the new Lieutenant Governor, Sir Francis Bond Head was arriving in Toronto. Bond Head was an assistant poor law administrator, and intent on imposing workhouses for the poor, not Owenite colonies. Acknowledgements Last paragraph of Chapter 3 in the Communist Manifesto Marx mentions that the Owenites in England, and the Fourierists in France, respectively, oppose the Chartists and Reformists. Topic. 
Topic. See also. Cooperative. Owenstown.